Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guy video on how to find magnitude and direction of a vector using the poll feature. Now I'm completing this on a Casio FX991EX, but you can do it on any calculator that has this poll polar coordinates feature. It's located here just above the plus sign. This would typically be used to convert Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates and of course you can use it for that if uh, polar coordinates are part of your studies but there is a secret trick uh, that we can use it for as well which is calculating the magnitude and direction of a vector and we can get both results straight away let's take a look at the questions that we've got here so for each force so we've got three forces in vector form for each force find the magnitude of the force and the angle that the force makes with I, I being the horizontal vector, and that angle we're gonna give it in degrees for parts A and B, and then in radians for part C. We're gonna get started with the first vector. Just a quick double check, the angle unit for the calculator at present is degrees. We can see that with the little D here at the top. We're gonna to be using the pole feature, which is located above the plus sign. It is a second function, so it's shift, and then plus will activate the pole feature and that's opened up a set of brackets so typically you'd input the Cartesian coordinates that you wanted to convert in here uh, in terms of X and then Y and that's what we're going to do or do, do something very similar here with the vectors we're going to input the I direction vector first and then the Y direction vector so in this first example here we've got 10 I so we're going to input just 10 in here and then we want a comma in between them. So the comma is shift and right bracket to input a comma. And then we're going to input the J vector, the vertical vector, which is 24. And then close brackets. If everything's correct, press equals. And then we've got two results here. Now the notation that is used is relevant for polar coordinates there, radius and theta representing the angle. But it's going to work well enough for us to find magnitude and direction of these forces. So R would represent the magnitude. So in this case, it's going to be 26 newtons. And the angle here, well, that will be the angle that's formed with the horizontal. So that's with the I vector, 67.38 to two decimal places. And this works because we've uh, inputted the vector in terms of I first and then J, X first and then Y. So this will give the angle that is formed with the horizontal in this case, so with the I vector, 67.38. Let's try that again with the second example. This time we've got a column vector here, minus three, five, um, but we're going to input it horizontally. So shift pull to activate the pull feature. X direction vector is negative three, minus three, let's input that, and then comma, shift, comma, and then the vertical vector, the Y direction vector is five. Close the brackets and press equals. And once again, we've got the magnitude here, 5.83 newtons, scroll right, then we've got the angle formed with the I direction. So this is the angle that's formed with the positive I direction vector. Um, so that's why it's an obtuse angle here because uh, we've got um, a negative uh, value for the horizontal vector, the I direction vector, if you like. So the angle that we've got there is 121, let's say, degrees with the positive I. Depending on what's being asked for in your particular question, that's still going to be how it's formed with the I direction vector, but if you wanted it against the horizontal, you could do 180 minus 121. Uh, it could be that angle that you're looking for. So you just have to be careful just to read the question properly and just find out what exactly is needed for your particular question. All right, so let's move on to the third one that we have here. Uh, so it's shift and pull to activate the pull feature. Now, one thing that we must change with this one, because we want our answer to be in radians we need to change the angle unit of our calculator so it's shift and set up two for angle unit and two for radian we can see it's changed to a little r at the top there let's input our i and j vectors so it's six and then comma and then negative two minus two root three for our j vector close the brackets and here we've got our results again so we have magnitude of 6.93, let's say, 
to two decimal places let's scroll right and we've got um, theta here in radians minus 0.52 and so on now a good question at this stage might be well what if you want exact answers what if these can be given as exact answers well there is a secret way that you can actually reveal what they might be if they are relatively simple to give as exact answers now the calculator actually stores these values in your x and y on your calculator so x it'll store the r value the magnitude in this case y it will store the angles so if we press X and there's a shortcut to X here on the FX991EX, or you might have to press alpha and X to get that on other models and press equals, it's given that as a third. So an exact form answer for that because it's relatively simple, a relatively simple third. The calculator has been able to work out that we can give that in third form. Uh, if we press SD, you can see there it's that 6.93. Press it back, then we've got the third form answer when you first get your results, you'll get that in decimal form, but if it's possible to display it, for the calculator to display it as a third answer, then if you press X and then equals, you can get that revealed. Let's just see what Y is, which was our angle in radians. So this time we will need alpha. So alpha Y equals, and here we have our answer in radians. So minus one sixth of pi or minus pi over six. So that is in radians. The reason why it's negative is because that is below the horizontal. So essentially it's one sixth pi below the I direction vector on that one. So that's all that the negative means in this particular case. Okay, let's have a look at a slightly more involved question. This time looking at position vectors and doing some coordinate geometry with them. So we've got the points A and B have coordinates five, six, and 7, 4 respectively. And we've got to find A, B, giving your answer as a simplified third. So this time we are after specifically the third answer, the exact answer for that uh, part. And then B, the angle in degrees, so we're back to degrees, that um, the vector A, B makes with the horizontal at A. So essentially it will just be reading off what we get as our angle from the calculator. Right, so first thing I'm going to do this time actually is just change the angle unit back to degrees. We're currently in radians, so it's shift and set up. Angle unit and then one four degree. It's changed back to a D there. We know we've got the right unit to get our answer in degrees. Then it's shift and pull. Get the pull, pull feature activated. Now what we need to do here is we need to work out the difference between both the X and Y coordinates and input those into the pull feature. So I'm, I'm essentially going to take the furthest along on the X, which is point B, and subtract the values from point A. So we're going to have seven minus five for our X value that we're going to input. We're going to have four minus six as our Y value. And actually, I'm just going to let the calculator do that. I know that they are relatively simple sums and we could just input the solutions. It's going to be two and minus two, isn't it? But what if we had slightly more complicated figures um, to put in slightly more complex coordinates we could just let the calculator do it for us and it will still work so i'm just showing the, you this as an example even though in this case it's relatively straightforward so we've got um essentially the x coordinate of b minus the x coordinate of a comma y coordinate of b minus the y coordinate of a and then we'll close the brackets and press equals and uh, once again, straight away, we've got decimal form answers here. The distance between the two points directly, the vector AB will be 2.828 on there. So what we want is we want that as an exact answer as a third. So let's press X and equals. You can see here that that's two square root two. So that's what we're gonna put down as our answer. Let's just remind ourselves of what the angle was, alpha and Y equals. And then we've got that here, minus 45. Essentially, that's 45 degrees below the horizontal at point A. So if you imagined a horizontal line coming out of point A, then this particular vector would be 45 degrees below it. So there we go, quite a useful hack, if you like, uh, to be able to quite quickly find the magnitude and direction of a vector. You can, of course, use it to find polar coordinates or convert between Cartesian and polar coordinates as well but also quite useful 
in terms of being able to use this with with forces in vectors or position vectors as we de demonstrated with the second example there don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos but that's it for this video thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time on the calculator guide